and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we're jumping into a new brewer. Uh, first time I've reviewed one of their beers, and the brewer today is Midlight Brewing Company out of Santa Rosa, California. Today's beer in question is Rhythmic Chaos. This is a barley wine that clocks in at 9.75% ABV. So yeah, always exciting to jump into a beer from a brewer I've never tried any of their offerings. And uh, like I said, I have a bunch of barley wine set aside, so we have many barley wine reviews coming out. I know that's kind of rare, but I saved several up over the last few months uh, to, to have plenty to go around. So in terms of label art on this, uh, it's a very clean label design. It's got their kind of moonlight, man in the moon face on the top, kind of a caramelly gradient uh, theme on the can looks very nice and we are using my little stubby goblet delirium tremens glass today or delirium noel i guess it technically came for which i normally use for sours uh, but my stout glass is in the wash right now so uh, we're going to use this one serves the same function because it is a goblet style glass so we will not of course get anywhere near getting all of this barley wine in here but let's just get it poured all right, this is pouring the classic caramelly color. Very much a classic looking barley wine here. We'll back it off right when the tulip starts to go back inside itself. Turn that around so you can see the label if you're so inclined. Yep, visually that is that classic medium caramel color. It looks absolutely lovely in the glass. This one did form a nice head and it actually looks pretty rich and creamy. So maybe we get lucky and this sticks around for a while. Yeah, this smells fantastic. Yeah, no barrel aging on this one at all. This um, just smells of classic barley wine. So it's got a ton of caramel and toffee on the nose, and I'm definitely getting some figs and apricots. Those are like the main aromas I'm getting in there. And I can smell this nice doughiness, this nice breadiness coming from underneath. Uh, easily could be from a combo of the malts or the yeast strain that they use, but it smells very much like a classic barley wine. I've had so many barrel aged variants as of late. It's nice to just get to a standard run-of-the-mill barley wine as it were now one thing of note on this one uh the abv 9.75 this is not a low abv for any beer but for a barley wine that's maybe kind of on the bottom end of the middle of the road territory you're typically going to see them 10 plus uh, 11 12 plus percent is not uncommon these days historically they didn't have quite as high of an ABV. So this is probably a lot closer to a barley wine from you know many, many, many years ago. But uh, yeah, just comparative to what's in the marketplace right now, 9.75, not low, but it's definitely on the low end of average. But it looks great, smells great, head is still holding true. Let's jump right in, see what this one's about. Mm. Oh yeah, oh, that's a nice beer. This one punches above its weight. So there's a lot of complexity in this beer, a lot of complexity in this beer. And there's a lot happening in it that you don't often get in a barley wine. So before I get to the flavor profile, which is still opening up and letting me explore all the nuance, let's talk weight and let's talk texture. Uh, the body on this one feels like a nice full medium heavy, so it's true to the style in the ABV range. The mouthfeel on this one is uh, very silky, very creamy. When you agitate around the palate, you can uh, feel that resistance in it. So yeah, it, it fits right, but it's not always common that you get this silky, rich, velvety kind of mouthfeel. Normally you just get a bit of resistance. This one is quite silky and it adds to this really, really wonderful texture as you move it around the palate. Now, when you swallow. This is uh, another one that pleasantly surprised me. There's a ton of nuance, but there's a few things of note. One is that there is quite a substantial volume of prevalent bitters on the front of this one. It uh, actually could put some IPAs to shame. It's got a very, very bitter dominant profile up front, which I personally love. You don't always get it in a barley wine. Indeed, it's definitely the exception more than the norm, but for my money in a big complex beer style, it's just one added layer, one added additional element of nuance and complexity into a wonderful, wonderfully complex beer style. 
So that is of note. The second thing that I want to mention is that this kind of bitter intensity punches with this big coffee-like flavor up front. So it's got this mix of this underlying bittering as well as this almost roasted coffee note. And it's got to be coming out clearly from these roasted malts. But the flavor that I'm getting out of there is not what you would normally expect in a caramel colored barley wine. Though, before I continue going down the rest of the description for what I perceived on first sip, it is worth noting that on the can they tell you that they did put this in their 600,000 BTU copper kettle um, to bring it to boil, which could easily be imparting some different nuances and flavor profiles that are not the norm. So yeah, kettling is pretty common in sour beers. It is far less common in uh, barley wines, but that they took this and copper kettled it for the boil, uh, that's not something you see every day. And that process could easily be having an impact on how this beer is being perceived to my palate. But I really, really like it. So that's a lot to talk about on first sip. I'm gonna jump back in, second sip, We'll pick apart all the uh, additional layers of nuance that we'll talk about the balance and the finish. On um, first sip, I love it. So take two. Yeah, it's really nice. That big kick of bitters, it's a nice, nice kick. And it hits you with this wham bam bitters and kind of roast coffee sensation. Then it starts to back off a little bit and you start to get uh, caramel. A lot more molasses in this one uh, than you would find in your typical kind of caramel colored barley wine. So I don't know if it's that copper process, but it clearly has done a different job of the depth of caramelization on what they've put in here. Um, there's really not much in terms of flavor profile that I would say reminds me of toffee or butter toffee. It's leaning much more heavily into deeply caramelized notes of rich, rich, deeply roasted and caramelized caramel, as well as molasses. That's a lot of the nuance I'm getting there. In terms of the underlying kind of fruit elements like I got on the nose, in this one, it's really dark. It's almost like candied plum and candied fig. There's not really any kind of stone fruit kind of popping out of there. Like you often get apricots, you'll often get like peach, nothing like that. This is leaning very, very heavily into rich flavor territory. So extremely caramelized malts, extremely caramelized caramel kind of, you know, flavor that that's how it presents itself as well as molasses and then these bitters and this kind of roast coffee. So that's kind of everything that I'm getting in this flavor profile. It's really, really nice. And I gotta say for a 9.75, this one definitely punches above its weight in terms of finish as well. So the balance on this, it's a barley wine, it's not barrel aids. We're talking about, you know, the yeast and the malt. I think that it's beautifully balanced. And in this case, I would have to say the hops as well, because it's clear that they used plenty and they were not shy about it. So for my money, the balance of what they did with this beer is a really, really nicely done barley wine. It's different than your typical barley wine, and I think in a very, very good way. At least in my opinion, um, I wouldn't change the balance. I like the ratio of the hops, I like the ratio of the malts, and whatever yeast strain they used is really, really nice. So what about the finish? Well, this is on the lower end of average for a barley wine ABV in that territory, but because of that big intensity of caramelization and the kind of bitters that you get on the front, you get a boatload of mileage on the back end of each sip. It's very wet, it's very round, as is typical for a barley wine, but on this one, you really get long, lingering, very deeply, almost bordering on char elements out of the malt bill, which you don't expect in a caramel color one, and tons of lingering bitters and that richly roasted uh, caramelization as well as molasses. That's what's left, and it's long, long after each sip, but it's very even. Everything is uh, very clearly able to be discerned and picked out all the way even to the end of the finish. Guys, this is a really, really nice barley wine. First beer I've had from Moonlight. If this is what they're about, I'm definitely gonna keep my eyes out for more. I'm gonna take my time sip on this one and count my scores. When we come back, we will get this beer ranked from top to bottom.
All right, now that we've gotten to enjoy this beer, we're gonna get it ranked. This was Moonlight Brewing Company's Rhythmic Chaos, a barley wine clocking in at 9.75 ABV, and Moonlight Brewing is based in Santa Rosa, California. So guys, this was a really great beer. Uh, first time I've ever had a beer by Moonlight Brewing. I did get this one from Tavor, and this was great. Like I said, I've got a bunch of barley wines in the lineup, so barley wine fans, rejoice. I've got a lot coming up that uh, are out in the market now if you're on the hunt for really good barley wines. Um, this was one that was very much following a classic formula. No additives, no barrel aging, nothing like that. Just a classic, straightforward barley wine and they executed it masterfully. The key difference on this one was, and I strongly believe this to be true, their kettle uh, boiling of this really added a lot of depth and dimension to the nuance of the flavor profile and indeed it went a lot, uh, skewed a lot more heavily into the richer side of the caramelization, a lot darker. There were a lot more molasses notes and very deeply, deeply caramelized sugars as well as a nice kick of bitters up front. So this was a standard barley wine, but they did put a twist on it and their processes really did make for a very nice traditional barley wine drinking experience. So this was one that nearly swept it across the board. Indeed, there was only a solitary category that did not get a perfect score. And that category in question was the head and the retention. This one did an extremely good job, guys. I've had a few barley wines as of late that have actually really poured a very nice head to be poured at home. And yes, they are very active in terms of carbonation, but just the way that the beer presented itself in the glass, it actually kept the head and retained for a pretty substantive amount of time for the style. They're not known for keeping a big head for any great amount of time because they are very active in terms of carbonation as a rule. This one only missed it by a hair and I only docked a single point in the head and retention. So it does get a nine out of 10, which does of course leave a perfect 10 out of 10 in our remaining nine categories. That is aroma, taste, body, mouthfeel, finish, appearance, balance, feeling slash intangible, my subjective thoughts category, and finally example of style. So that does bring Moonlight Brewing Company's Rhythmic Chaos to a total score of 99 out of 100. Guys, I've been very, very lucky in the last several reviews. I've had some very, very high scoring beers, uh, several that did get a perfect score, several that were absolutely upper echelon. This is another one I could absolutely say that's true. First beer I've ever had from Moonlight Brewing. This one is an absolute winner. Guys, if you're a barley wine fan, as I am, this is absolutely one to keep on your radar. I did get mine from Tavur. I don't know when and if they may have some more in stock. I got this one a few months ago, uh, so maybe just keep checking back with Tavur. Uh, check Craft Shack, check Total Wine, your local bottle shop. Heck, check the brewer's website. Some of them do ship. But uh, regardless, absolutely fantastic beer. This is one I do highly, highly recommend. A true gem of a barley wine. Folks, that is today's review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to stay in the loop whenever the videos go live, just toggle on your notifications. Hit the bell icon. It is right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.